Hi, I'm Emily from Bailey the Bell Tents and welcome to Bailey Meets and I'm joined in the tent today with the lovely Becca from Holden Farm and we're here today to talk about everything about getting married or having an event in a field or at a farm or any outdoor venue where you have to do it all by yourself. So firstly, welcome Becca. Hello, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure. Becca it is absolutely like, I have no idea what I'm going to do in front of the camera so we're just going to roll with it today. Rolling. We're absolutely Seriously fine. rolling. But she's going to do great. So, so Becca, tell us a bit about Holden Farm. Is it a family business you run? Yeah, so Holden Farm has been in my family. I'm the fourth generation. And a couple of years ago, we decided to open up a campsite and we also opened up a field, an events field, so people could come and host parties, weddings, whatever they wanted to. So you're based on the South Downs, aren't you? Based on the South Downs. We're six miles outside of Winchester. Perfect. So who, who are your, your main, so we're, we're talking, before the video started, who's your main sort of camping market? Who comes to your campsite? So the camping, I mean, it's it all depends, but we have a lot of people walking the South Downs way, and they come and use us. And then we have a lot of people from London, I would say, yeah, the Southwest London gang that come out of London. Both parents work, want to spend some time with their children, and uh, my favourite thing about them is they come out of London, and they say we really want to spend time with our children, and they arrive. And they set the tent up and have a really good time and then on about Saturday 11 o'clock ish they come in and they say can I have the Wi-Fi <laughs> <laughs> and I say we don't have Wi-Fi at weekends it's the country <laughs> and they say oh right and then they walk out again and it's like obviously Wi-Fi doesn't switch off at weekends that's not that's not what happens here but they need to they have to come and ask it's so fascinating yeah oh bless I love it getting in the, in the great outdoors though <laughs> Yeah. Where, where's my iPad? I know, how scary is this? So actually I'm ca camping in the middle of nowhere. So we've actually done a, uh, uh, it wasn't a wedding, it was a 40th birthday set up last year at Holden Farm and um, you have a perfectly beautiful field for events, specifically for events, that um, has walkers going past, don't you? Yeah, so, so the South Downs Way goes straight past the event field, um, which is quite good fun and some of the walkers have loved it. They've been yeah. offered pizza as they walk past, which is quite amusing. Yeah. Um, and actually I think the people who are in the events field rather like it. They like to yeah. sort of they're in the middle of nowhere, but they like to sort of say, oh, they're still hi, up, yeah. bit of a show off. A I think, but from seeing your field, I think it flagged up quite a few things that to, to consider when you're organising an event in a field, things to consider because it's great, but you're, you're next to a walking field, a, a yep. walking path. There are things like security for your field. Yep. If you're not going to be on, on your site the entire time and you've got marquees and tents and prosecco vans, all that kind of stuff, it's thinking about who's going to be responsible because I, I, on your particular venue, are you responsible for that or is it your, your hires? So, we, our setup is quite different to yes. most people who have fields, um, mainly because we're a working farm, yes. so there are lots of distractions for me as running a business. So I rent my field to you and you are allowed to do what you want, yeah. and you can hire in who you want, you can use whichever suppliers you yeah. want, and it's your responsibility yeah. for the whole thing. I also have um, a rural responsibility. Okay, tell us about that. What's, what's... So instead of giving me a deposit, when you rent it, I ask for a rural responsibility fee. Yeah. And that means that when you leave, you leave the field as you found it. Leaving a trace, yeah. You can break a, a glass bottle, I don't mind, but you need to tell me where that glass bottle got broken. It's just so, like, this time of year, my, my sheep are in the field. Yeah. It's a multi-purpose. We had, for our, our, our particular wedding, we got married in 2012, and we got married in a farmer's field um, overlooking Swanage and Corfe Castle, and we had a real issue with our caterers on the site. And we, again, like you, we, we really believe in leaving no trace at the end of your event and we'd found after the um the wedding the next day when we were clearing up and packing away that our caterers on this other time hadn't bothered to scrape their plates they had been scraping behind the marquee into uh -huh. the um into like the, the shrubs and stuff or, or the um or the brambles which is fine but weekly it's a, it's a cattle field yeah. and and it's thinking like no actually this is not somewhere i can just sort of chuck my waist yeah. it's yeah. having to think responsibly about the fact that you're in the countryside and you need to definitely leave it as you found it yeah. for everyone else to enjoy after because people might hire it after you as well it's not just you you're on your event it's for everyone to yeah. enjoy yeah. so um the conversation we thought we'd have today is about when you want to have a field wedding what do you really want to have when you're imagining a field wedding because the Pinterest board that you might have in your head might be very different in reality to what you would expect. And would you agree, Becca? <laughs> so I'm laughing because I think people have this imaginally, like this emotional, fabulous, magical idea, I'm gonna get married in a field. And when they get to the field, it's not the field they had in their head. And I think you have to think of so many considerations. Yes. And I quite often start conversations with people on the phone and I say, how many elderly people guests you have do you want people to come in 
at different times? Do they need easy access? Do you need lots of taxis? Then you probably want to choose a field that's got tarmac that goes to that field. Um, and I talk about what you actually want to do. The majority of people that want to have a wedding in a field want a really good party. Yeah. It's getting away from the noise and everything, yeah. doing what you want without having to interrupt your neighbours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then you've also got to discuss, because some fields have uh, curfews. Yeah. You get yeah. overexcited about a field, but actually a lot of fields have curfews because they're near villages or yeah. whatever it is. So I think there's a lot of um, fine print to look at before you go and visit sites. Yeah. I think um, when you go to that site, I mean, it depends. Again, if it's a farmer's field, you may be lucky with it. There might be water. Or there might be a water tap there, and caterers and bar staff often do need to do things like wash things yep. or, or fill jugs of water or wash glasses. Those kind of things. Or more importantly, you need water for hangovers. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Heads, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bottom. But that's the thing. Do you need to um, get a standpipe and get, get um, water to your field, or are you going to bring it all in in plastic bottles? And that has its own sort of issues in terms of use of yeah. plastic and stuff and as well. Kind of quite public at the moment that very public at the moment is, is use of plastic and how much you're using and consuming and are you reusing so really think about when you go there look at it objectively think about every aspect of your day and what you're going to need to be able to do every aspect of that day you might have toilets on site you might not have toilets on site you might have to have um, the the trailers with the blue blue, blue stuff yeah. in it. and then you might have to think about power is there electricity nearby in a nearby barn that you're going to be cabling from or are you bringing a generator in and um, what other things can you think about cars where your car is going to be parking like you said about yeah. tracks making sure there's tarmac if you've got elderly guests can they walk across the grass what's the shortest distance there are so many little details to really consider and it's not as easy as going, I'm going to have that field there because the view is beautiful, it's really... Yeah, and, and a lot of suppliers are a bit fussy about yeah. where they go to. Mm -hmm. Our field is in the centre of our farm. It's a half mile up a dirt track. If you came to see me today, you'd be like, no way am yeah. I ever going up there because of the mud and the rain. But in the summer it dries out and it's a really good firm track. And we don't have problems, but I do know of another field not that far from us. And they have suppliers that go and visit and say, we're not coming here. Yeah, well, Bailey Bell Tents, for example, we um, we drive to our jobs with the trailer and we haven't got a 4x4 that we use, although we probably should by these points, <laughs> yes. we have a 4x4, we should learn by now. But we drive a trailer and, and have a big box on, on the back. And if it's too muddy, like on our dirt track, there is no way on earth that we're going to get that much equipment up a dirt track. And the same with a marquee company or a TP company that you might hire. They've got tons and tons and tons of weight on their back. And if they can't get onto the field, then it's pretty much game over, yeah. isn't it? So it's really, really think about the location and is it a practical it may look like it's fun but is it practical another thing to consider when you're picking a field or a venue like that is would you need to have an events license to run it there probably not you might not always have to but if you are selling alcohol or you're having um, amplified music and you are like Becca yeah. says if you're near to um, a local village sound travels so much you don't realize how far it'll go especially if you're on, on top of a hill and, and it, the wind carries you you can hear from miles away so do your research, whoever you're finding your field from, and there are certain services which we'll talk about in a minute, actually how to locate your field, and um, think about do you need to have a temporary events notice because you don't want anyone knocking on the door or knocking yeah. on the marquee halfway through your wedding or, or event going, sorry, you need to turn your music down because that's just a downer on everyone. Yeah, it's boring. This wind is ridiculous. I'm just listening to it. That oh, it's quite fun. Um, thinking wind is ah. one thing we haven't talked about. The great British weather. The weather. <laughs> nice slide line into there. Nice, isn't it? Um, and I think a lot of people have this emotional <coughs> idea about a field and they go and look around it and it's a gloriously sunny day and they don't factor yeah. in what might happen. And actually, that 40th was a great example yeah. because it, it peed with rain. It was horrible. I mean, it rained for the entire weekend. Yeah. It rained. Did it rain when you were putting up yes. the tents? Yeah. Yes, it yeah. was the wettest, I think it was one of our wettest of the season. Yeah. We prized ourselves, we always get there and it's sunny, we're like, yes, <laughs> we must have some sort of sun dance we do, but this one, I was... But they, before. the girl who'd organised it, she was super organised, she really was, she really thought about yeah. it. So her guests had these tents yeah. to sleep in, they had, uh, you tell them because I don't know, <laughs> those two enormous ones. The um, canopies, oh no, the, the big bertha tents, they had two big bertha, they had a chill out tent and they had like a dining set up yeah. so they could eat inside together. But actually because it rained so much, they spent a lot of time in those two yeah and then their sort of dj dancing area also had a, a light marquee gazebo type over the top of it um they still had the fire going in the rain yeah. so they had a nice time and then it did dry out funny it dried out 
for the Saturday night when they wanted to party. So it worked really well. Yeah. And it was dry when you took the tents down. Yeah. But one of the things they had in their in their setup was they had a lot of hay bale furniture, didn't they? They tried yes. to create the sofas and things, which again, hay bales and wet, they, they don't. It just, it's not worth it. It's really not. No, num number one, no one's going to sit on them. Number two, it's really uncomfortable. And number three, if you're hiring them, you can't give them back at them if, they, yeah. if they're soaking because the farmer who, you, who you've um, rented them from can't use them again. Yeah, they're, yeah. They are, they're wasted, so making sure they're covered up. That's what, yeah. that's, it's sad. It is sad. But it's a fact of life, it's, it's Britain. Yeah. And, and there are lots of different types of brides. Would that be a fair thing to say? Yes. <laughs> and so... I don't know what you're insinuating. No, but I think some brides are very happy to put on a white dress and put, put on a pair of wellies and say, let's get on with it yeah and some brides want to buy the very expensive pair of shoes and they don't want to see mud and if you're going to get married in the field do you know it doesn't matter what the weather's doing there's always going to be a slight chance of mud and um, when my sister got married five years ago we she got married in our local village and then she walked her guests back to the farm yeah it's a two mile walk oh oh she did it in white wellies they walked it I'd say two thirds of the guests walked with her with their heels and their hands but it was quite punchy yeah and so you know, if that's what you want to do, then you can do it. But I think think about your guests as well, and what you really your, your want. Your guests to are coming remember. to celebrate with you, yes. and it's your vision. But ultimately, they may curse you at the end of it. <laughs> they might have because this is what we're doing, guys. I'm like, well, I don't really. I'm not up for that. And um, that fortieth you did, they had a load of dropouts of wives and girlfriends yeah. and mothers saying, "Do you know what? It's going to be a wet weekend, and I don't do camping anyway." And they had a lot of dropouts, which again, you spent all that. I mean, they, and they really had gone to town. They yeah. had, different caterers for different different meals and yeah. um, so they got to that stage and then they had all these dropouts so again just yeah consider think, everything think of everything be, be logical about it now excuse me, one of the things we th we talked about was um how to locate your oh. event field which i think is a really good one to discuss so um obviously holden farm you have your own advertising on your website for me, as as a bride, when when we were getting married, we were very old school, and we decided whereabouts in the world we wanted to get married, and it happened to be Dorset. And we got in our car, drove to Dorset, and we drove miles and miles and miles to look for views, for things we liked, and where we wanted to celebrate. And again, things like roads to consider, and then we knocked on lots of doors, which was fantastic. As it happened, we got a really lovely farmer who was very accommodating. Um, which is amazing <laughs> which in this is modern amazing. world. <laughs> it really was. Um, happened to be connected to the National Trust, which came with its own implications as well. But yes. you know, it, it was. we did a lot of labour in trying to find a place and knocking on doors. There are, these days, a lot of easier ways of doing so. There are places online, like um, there's a company called Field for Hire, there's Land for Hire, there's um, the land for events. Land for events. Isn't Sorry, it? I'm going to correct you. Please do. Land for I'm events. I'm sure there's going to be a land for hire one as well. And, and <laughs> hire a field. Hire a field. And I think they are great places. And um, I would say their website doesn't have quite enough information. So do make that phone call before yes. you go and visit. Yeah. I I reckon I was on about 15 viewings to a booking last wow. year. And I don't mind it, but it's a lot of my time, which I don't yeah. really have on a working farm. And I. It's it's a difficult one because you want yeah. to make everyone. So if you think more about it, have a, a handful of questions which you can do on the phone, yes. and then go and yeah. visit. You'll end up you end up in a better position. You need, you need to really know what you want before you get there. Absolutely. So there are places like that, and they, they work as brokers. They're, they're third part. They, they basically connect you to the landowner in, in, in between, and they sort of yeah. they, they take their cut from that way. So it's worth having a look. But again, if if you're like any broker though, worth having a look and then see if you can find the farm another way. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, cut the broker Sorry out. if you're watching this on that <laughs> That's what people are doing on Airbnb now, did you know that? No, I didn't. Apparently, all these Airbnbs are going really well and now setting up their own websites. Oh. So people are now using Airbnb as the middle man. And it's then, entrepreneurial uh, yeah. spirit, I it like is. to call it. Yeah. Fair play to them if I they're getting a better deal out of it. But also, don't forget that I, as, as somebody who has a field, pay the companies to be on their website so yeah. they're not you're not cutting out all of their commission they are still getting some i'm not i'm not being that cruel <laughs> absolutely but it's, it's definitely worth yeah do your research and know what you want before you get there and things pop up or if you're really not up for that at all there are there are some of the venues we, we go to often have like in like your farm acres and acres of land that they don't use for and it's worth going to a venue and just asking them do you use that for events could we consider that because you would get the security of having a staff member who knows yeah. it a bit more and that's and they, they can guide you a little bit more into suppliers that they know they know the tracks a bit like that so just just ask i don't really like 
dull detail on that one. It's, it's a venue is already established. Their infrastructure is in place. Yes. So it does tend to not always possibly make it a bit cheaper. Yeah. If they've got loos on site, that's going to help. A big you. one. A loo block on it, so like a two plus one oh. loo block can be about a thousand pounds. They and are the rest mad. of it. And, and uh, we should have gone into loos. I think, mm. in a, uh, apart from the whole obvious of dealing with poo. As somebody who has cleaned <coughs> loos for an entire summer, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> on that happy note, Becca, thank you so much for being in the chat. <laughs> We're ending this conversation on poo. I thought. I'm oh, sorry about that. Let's change it. Uh, <laughs> enjoy finding your amazing yeah, space and enjoy it because this country has got the most beautiful places, and they're there to be found. And I think we've talked a lot of negativity. Yeah, actually, on yeah. this journey, and it's not getting married in a field. There is nothing better because it's your field for the day. You can decorate it As how you, you want. want it, yeah. what you vision, and you have a great time with with no hassle. And actually, you can bring in your own stuff or not. You could just have your friends handing around the food. It's a really special place to have a wedding or an event. Well, as, as someone who has got married in the field, I completely recommend it as well. Yeah. But it's just making sure you are pragmatic about it and realising there's a lot to consider when you're doing it. So, um, Better ending? Much better yes. ending, I think. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thank you so much for being with us, Tony Baker. And we will speak to you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Hi guys, if you enjoyed our video today and you'd like to check out more about what we've been doing, check out down here to look at further videos in our series or subscribe here. Bye!